Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this uh, second GGP webinar, uh, the GGP Connect. I am Anne Gauthier. I'm the director of the Generation and Gender program. And as you know, the GGP is devoted to it's an infrastructure devoted to the study of population and family dynamics. We are currently collecting data in various countries. And the purpose of these webinars are to give a platform, to, a voice to our national team so that they can feature the work they have been doing and especially the insights that they can uh, provide. Today, we're delighted to give the platform to the Moldova team who has been collecting the data in the most unusual circumstances before the pandemic and during the pandemic. But before I introduce you to the speaker, let me just tell you how it's going to work today. We're first going to have uh, the presentation from Moldova, first a, a brief introduction by the ministry and then 20 minutes presentation by the Moldova team. This will be followed by 20 minutes of question and answer from you, the audience. Please use the Q&A button for that, not the chat button, but the Q&A. Uh, button. And then I will close the meeting after 45 minutes. I will formally close it, but we will keep the channel on so that if you have additional questions, if you want to interact further with us, with the Moldova team, it will be possible to continue um, doing so. So uh, on this, let me introduce you the two speakers today. We're delighted to have uh, Mrs. Eliona Kritu, who is head of the Demographic Policies Unit in the Ministry of Health, Labor and Social Protection. This ministry was a partner in the recent GGS in Moldova. She will give a brief presentation uh, about uh, the project. And this will be followed by Mrs. Aliona Christe, who is project officer for the UNFPA country office in Moldova, and who is the coordinator of the Generation and Gender Survey. So on that, I would first like to officially open the webinar and pass it on to Mrs. Kretu for her intervention. Mrs. Kretu, please unmute yourself mm -hmm. and then. Thank you, thank you, Anne. Uh, dear Ms. Gauthier, dear GGP partners and, co and colleagues, uh, thank you for the invitation to share Moldova's experience in conducting GGP uh, program in Moldova. Uh, the Republic of Moldova is uh, undergoing significant demographic changes uh, characterized by an increase of aging population, massive immigration of, of uh, young people, and low fertility. By 2035, the country population uh, could shrink from 2.6 million to 2, 2. Uh, 2 million, uh, oh, sorry, uh, from 2.6 million, million to 2 million people. And every third person in Moldova can uh, over 60 years old. Uh, to address uh, these demographic challenges, the Moldova government, in partnership with uh, UNIFPA, committed to develop demographic policies based on human rights and the evidences collected through generation and gender survey. GGS uh, means for us the most comprehensive demographic survey conducted, uh, conducted for the first time in Moldova. It represents a huge data set with disaggregated qualitative data about, about more than 100 demographic indicators that we have already explored and used for the develop, uh, development of action plan on demography to be integrated into the national development program Moldova 2030. Also, GGS provide, uh, provided to us evidence to track the progress of uh, SDGs indicators on sexual and reproductive health that uh, were not available in national statistics and uh, that we will use uh, for policy development. 
GGS in Moldova represents a joint effort of the most important and strategic national and, and international institutions. Uh, it's uh, uh, financially supported by Moldovan government, UNIFPA, and the India UN Development, development Partnership Funds and implemented by the UNIFPA in partnership with the Ministry of Health, Labor and Social Protection, National uh, Bureau of Statistics and uh, uh, NIDI. We started uh, the uh, preparatory activities in uh, 2018 and completed the field work in November 2020 during the pandemic period. Moldova was among the few countries that continues to conduct face-to-face -face data collection during COVID-19. Uh, this imposed a lot of efforts and innovative approach from all implemented partners, partners for uh, which I would like to express my gratitude. I use uh, this opportunity to thank the national coordina coordination team that applied different innovative uh, solutions to overcome uh, many challenges related to COVID-19. Great thanks to NIDI team for daily support and monitoring of the data collection process that was started before the pandemic and resumed after the onset of the pandemic. To complete the data collection in uh, compliance with the national legislation, the entire process was conducting close consultation with the National Agency for Public Health. They trained the, the field operators uh, how to protect against uh, COVID-19 and also provide weekly information about number of infections in the localities include, included uh, into the sample. We provided uh, PPE sets to all uh, field operators and also respondents to protect them against COVID-19. In response uh, to the COVID-19, uh, they, they have been adjusted the research methodology of the study by integrated uh, module of questions related to COVID-19, which will allow to assess the COVID-19 impact on, on the society, through a comparative analysis of uh, the situation in the society before and after the outbreak of the pandemic. Uh, finally, we managed to visit uh, 20,000 households and interviewed more than 10,000 respons uh, respondents from 153 urban and rural localities. The main challenges and the best practices were summarized in Moldova, Moldova's case study published on the uh, on UNIFPA web page, web page and will be presented today by Alona Christie, project officer uh, on GGS in Moldova. For the next two years, uh, our priority will be dissemination and communication of uh, GGS uh, results. To make full use of GGS data, we developed a detailed dissemination action plan aiming to engage a large spectrum of national and international stakeholders. This year, we have initiated partnership with national universities in order to encourage students and teachers to use GGS data in the development of, uh, of academic papers and their phases. Also, we are currently working with some local uh, NGOs in the development of uh, policy scenarios based on GGS data and expect to have at least five policy documents on demographic and gender responsive family policies. In the next uh, two months, we plan to launch a uh, fellowship program for national independent researchers to develop targeted analysis based on GGS data. In the last part of this year, we plan to establish partnerships 
with at least three international academic institutions, universities from Eastern Europe and Central Asia and Western Europe in order to develop joint cross-country analysis based on GGS data. In parallel to the dissemination activities, we will conduct a communication campaign to present the main results on media and social media. Finally, I would like to congratulate the entire team for these results and I hope our experience will be useful and it could be replicated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kritu. Uh, and especially thank you for your support, for your commitment to providing the community, the political sphere with empirical data to formulate the best policy. We really appreciate it a lot. But now let me pass on to Aliona. We'll talk more about the experience of carrying the field work in Moldova. Aliona, it's all yours. Thank you, Anne. Uh, dear colleagues, dear Ms. Kretsu, it's very nice and a privilege to me to present to you today Moldova's experience in conducting the Generation and Gender Survey in the Republic of Moldova. First of all, I would like to mention that this was our first experience or first wave in conducting such complex surveys. And I will start my presentation with sharing my screen. Just a moment. Do you see my screen? Yes, wonderful, thank Perfect. you. Perfect, so you, as you can see in the first slide, this is our image and slogan that we use to promote and to encourage uh, respondents to participate uh, in uh, the GJS survey. So the, the main slogan is, be the voice of your generation. So we a little bit adjusted uh, it in the context of COVID, but I will present it later. The GGP in Moldova was conducted uh, in partnership with Romain four institutions. Uh, this is uh, the main donor, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Social Protection, UNAFE Moldova Country Office, the National Official Statistic named National Bureau of Statistics and NIDI. Also, I'd like to mention that we have the financial support from the Ministry, UNFPA and also India on a Development Partnership Fund. My today presentation will be structured on the following main stages in conducting GGS. And first of all, I will discuss and present the planning and preparation activities that was conducted in 2018. The second uh, will be dedicated to the listing exercise and sample development that uh, used the innovative approach by using geospatial technology and conducting during 2019. The first section will be dedicated to data collection that was the most challenging due to the COVID pandemic. And the last one will be our plan for dissemination and communication activities for the next two years. Uh, so regarding the planning and preparation, um, so we start with establishment of national DGP coordination, selection of the national coordination project officer, and establishment of a steering committee that is composed on different representatives from ministry, UN agencies, civil society organization, relevant stakeholders that could advise and help in the better implementation of the project. Uh, also, we review recent experience in conducting GGS and very useful to uh, the experience of Kazakhstan, Belarus, Poland, Germany. All of these experiences was presented during the regional workshop on GGS that was conducted in January 2019. Uh, as you can see here, maybe some of you participated in this event, so you uh, see here uh, a regional event, some photos from this event, uh, when we signed the memorandum of agreement between partners that committed to help to participate in the implementation of the GGS in Moldova. Also, we signed the cooperation agreement between uh, UNECHE and National Bureau of Statistics on using GGS data. Uh, more than 40 professionals from different uh, Eastern Europe and Central Asia countries participated and shared their experience. And it was really helpful to understand our needs, prog uh, possible issues and problems uh, that we um, could face. 
Uh, the sample development starts in the next month uh, and to, to ensure the quality of the data, the National Bureau of Statistics that was responsible for uh, development of the sample decided to uh, to build a, a sample frame uh, based um, on a complex listing exercise and to save time because it was the first experience previous to this NBS conducted paper-based listing activity that took around two years to, to, sa to save time and to do it quicker. Uh, they decided to, to conduct a listing exercise by using your special technology, uh, software and the digital devices. So in this purpose, uh, um, during uh, April and the June three months, uh, we discussed uh, about possible software that could be used to, to be uh, for listing exercise and the selection uh, was uh, for census fieldwork application. And I will uh, discuss, present shortly about this. Uh, to make possible the collection on tablets, so we purchased uh, 100 tablets with uh, this characteristic, you can see it on the slide. 70 power bank to make possible to collect, um, to extend or so enlarge the life of the uh, tablet and SIM cards with internet connection that allow to, to collect data um, and to, um, save the data um, ongoing. This is uh, how the uh, application uh, look like. Uh, the um, customization uh, was conducted by Team Dev Company. It's an Italian company specialized on GIS. So uh, it's uh, uh, this application includes two, two possibility: a mobile application that is uploaded on tablets, and web application that allowed to monitoring the ongoing process and to ensure the quality and control of the data. So uh, the um, field operator can just click on this um, on this building and just save the characteristic of each household. Following this uh, customization, of course, we did some strengthening uh, capacity building of NBS staff in using software and. Uh, uh, and uh, digital devices. After that, we trained uh, the supervisors and uh, tried to, to uh, identify, hire and uh, have this field uh, staff that will collect data by using, um, by using this tablet. You can see some photos from the training activities. Uh, listing data collected started officially in November 2019 and lasted for two months. So we finished it in December uh, in 2019. The total number of points, so building uh, analyzed and uh, saved was uh, 64,000. And uh, uh, from this uh, area's uh, frame, we selected uh, about uh, 1,900. Uh, sorry, 19,000 and 5,500 households um, selected from uh, one, uh, 153 localities. We faced different issues related to lack of knowledge and experience since this was our first experience in conducting uh, listing on tablets. So NBS faced uh, lack of institutional human resources uh, in IT and GIS and also a lack of experience of uh, field operators, how to, use, uh, how to use tablets for data collection. Um, regarding the methodology, because in parallel to the listing process that uh, was conducted uh, among, uh, so during 2019, we um, worked on methodology harmonization and uh, we um, translate the technical guidance into national language we translate the questionnaire in two languages, in Romanian and in Russian. Also, when we adjust the questionnaire, we check the definition, the national official classification used uh, for household for different uh, indicators. We develop the technical methodological instruction for each question uh, that was very useful for the field operators to understand what exactly uh, um, clarify or define the question. And to the last point, uh, we decided to uh, complete the current uh, questionnaire with some additional questions related to SDG 
561, that is about uh, reproductive health uh, rights. Um, and active aging indicators needed to add to, to um, estimate um, uh, the active aging index that we are working at the moment. So hope we will have this uh, this year. We also added Washington Group Disability Statistic Criteria and uh, in the context of COVID, a special model was added related to the impact of COVID on the society. The piloting state was conducted in January 2020 and this uh, was under the responsibility of sociological company that was uh, contracted specially for the data collection. We um, conducted um, 60 questionnaires in two languages in different regions, identifying many, uh, many issues relating to coding, to translations, and finally adjusted the questionnaire, installed them on, uh, on the tablets. Data collection process started in 2020 in January. Um, so the data collection was conducted by Magenta Consulting Company. It's a very good company. They presented uh, a detailed strategy for data collection. And um, um, when we had the company on board, we did the training of field operators. In uh, the first um, round of training, we conducted uh, uh, four training sessions covering 30% per training. Um, and um, uh, this training was conducted not, also, not only by sociologists uh, or demographists, but also by gender experts, by um, fertility experts, because uh, GGS questionnaire include these specific uh, section uh, sensible uh, questions. And we dedicated a special attention to, to this component. In parallel, you can see that Moldova section uh, uh, was created on GGP web page. We include overview about the project, description of the project purpose, and the team of field operators responsible for diff different districts. Uh, so respondents could enter to this uh, web page and learn more about the GGS. This is the official launch of the data collection that took place in February uh, 2020. So the event was very big. We presented also um, our strategy. We presented also the TV score that we developed to promote the GGS. And of course, this event was uh, distributed in all national TV channels. Um, in terms of communications, uh, we conduct a large communication campaign started with TV. Uh, sport, uh, radio sport in both languages, uh, different short videos regarding the process of data collection in the field, 300 posters uh, delivered and uh, placed uh, in the localities, flyers um, that uh, was uh, delivered via post, stickers used during data collections. Additionally, we had uh, also a social media campaign. Uh, you can see some posts. This is from data collection process in the field. And of course, the COVID, yes, the, the, most, <laughs> the biggest problem <laughs> because uh, in, uh, on 15 March, the uh, government uh, declared the um, lockdown and we were forced to suspend temporarily all the activities related to the data collection. Of course, we used this period for the adjustment. Uh, so we um, adjusted, you can see on the slide, we adjusted uh, the questionnaire, we integrated a new module because it's, it's important to us to understand also the impact of COVID. We trained all field operators on COVID protective measures uh, to know how to protect themselves and how to protect uh, also the respondents. We provided PPE equipment, we analyzed the risk and identified some actions in case we need and we adjust the communication campaign on all visibility, uh, visibility, visibility products. So you can see here our team, um, company, comp sociological company that um, provided these boxes to all field uh, operators. Of course, we resumed the data collection in close consultation with the ministry and the National uh, Agency for Public Health that provided support to us in um, daily monitor the cases of COVID in the localities. But we try to face some process with uh, turnover of personnel and uh, to, to, um, 
to replace the person who uh, refused to continue data collection, we conducted additional training and involved additional persons uh, to increase the pool of field operators. So additionally, we conducted eight online training sessions. So it was practically every week we conduct a training online composed in small groups of five, seven person that was trained. Uh, we checked, we uh, uh, developed quiz tests to check their knowledge and to be sure that they understood correctly the questionnaire and what uh, they have to complete. This is a totally new format that we used for, for data collection during the pandemic and uh, we were lucky because it's a summer period and this is allow <laughs> us to, to collect data outside. Um, so. Uh, different issues. Um, so due to the lack of time today, because I have only 20 minutes, I will try to to um, to go faster for for some slides. So we have these issues related to low participation in the municipality. This is a um, usual problem in, uh, in all the surveys, uh, not GGS. Low participation rate of men and young people, especially, and limited knowledge about protection measures, and this is tough turnover involved in data collection process. Solution applied was described very detailed in my uh, in my publication that is posted uh, uh, on our UNFPA web page and also on the need the technical section. So if you are interested, you could um, you could analyze uh, in depth this uh, publication. Um, and so we um, just tried to, to go uh, step by step. So in case we have turnover of personnel, we, um, we include new personnel, we train new people, we provide coaching program for these newly operators, we switch to a mobile team to go and close enumeration area in case uh, this enumeration area is partially completed. We create uh, a call center to, to increase the communication with respondents and provide, uh, I don't know, uh, answer to their questions in case uh, they have. Uh, so these incentives is another important uh, aspect. Uh, so we provide a different inception, incep incentives for rural and urban community in municipality. We provided five euros. And you can see here that the general response rate is about 50%. It is a very good result. This is the new slogan we used during the pandemic. The voice of your generation is important even during the pandemic period. So we adjusted all posters, stickers, uh, flyers, and additional advanced letter that ask to participate in the survey. The progress of data collection could be analyzed here. We see the uh, gap between May and uh, March, March and June. And after that, uh, the situation is um, clear in terms of uh, uh, number of questionnaire collected. This is uh, the technical paper where uh, you can find uh, this um, Moldova case study. About the validation process, so um, of course, the data ongoing monitoring was conducted by NIDI but also the sociological company conducted callbacks and on-site visits to check the quality of the data. Regarding the data dissemination, uh, last year we established the GGS uh, full list of indicators and possible disaggregation criteria. We consulted this list with the main stakeholders, including line ministries, UN agencies, civil society organization. We include all their requirements into into this final document and, and currently we are working to, on the data processing and developing the final data report of GGS. Uh, in terms of increasing and enlarge the spectrum of stakeholders in analysis research and also in policy development, um, we uh, plan uh, several activities that uh, Ms. Kretso also mentioned during her intervention. Uh, so, of course, we uh, would like to focus on four main pillars. This is uh, cooperation with academic sector, cooperation with uh, think tanks, civil society organization, uh, cooperation with um, independent researcher and also international cooperation in comparative analysis. Currently, we are under the development of action plan and demography that is based uh, practically of evidences on GGS, provided by GGS. 
and also we cooperate with uh, um, very recognized civil society organization NGO that is developing five uh, policy document on gender responsive family policies that we expect to to change to amend the existing laws. Uh, the dissemination communication activity, uh, I'm glad that this activity will be uh, conducted in partnership with media and thank you for your cooperation. And of course, we plan a series of communication uh, I don't, events, online events, uh, international conference that uh, will bring the main result of DGS uh, also on aging on every section we plan to have infographics. Uh, we plan to develop video graphics for some relevant data to participate at different TV shows, debates, uh, uh, very, very big plans, hope uh, <laughs> to realize, <laughs> to have time to realize them in the next two years. And thank you for your attention, waiting for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation, uh, Aliona. Uh, I particularly appreciate all the hard work that was done all the way starting from the sampling and all the way now to uh, planning the next step and dissemination. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like now to turn to the audience. Remember, you have two options. You can either type your question in the Q&A or you can raise your hand and that will be visible to us and then we can uh, pass the floor uh, to you. So I'd like to see if, um, and I'll be assisted by that with uh, uh, the DGP hub, uh, Mike Hornstra, who is helping me here. Let's see, there's a, a question, the first question here coming uh, from our colleague uh, Fukuda from Japan. The question is, uh, Aliona, is there any difference between the early data that you collected with the respondents and the later data collected, meaning here after the, uh, the March when it resumed, in terms of their social attributes, so the characteristic of the respondent? Do you have a chance to look at that yet? Um, so, uh, yes, thank you for this question. So we are now in the processing um, this data, but generally when we started to collect data, we focused more uh, on rural areas. So um, of course, um, the first period um, we collected all, um, I mean, um, the data from people who are interested and willing to participate. And after that, the second part is well, it was harder because we need to cover also hard refuse, soft refuse, and need to apply different solutions. And of course, to balance the uh, respondents profile but um, there is differences between the uh, uh, before pandemic and after the pandemic we tried different uh, solution to equilibrate to balance this i i don't have concrete data to share now with this with you but this is a uh, uh, just general uh, information okay um i see uh, another question coming from a colleague from Estonia, Tina Tambom. She wants to know, Aliona, how did you attract the attention of media channels? How do you approach media? As you mentioned that uh, the, even the discussion were broadcasted. What, what are your insights here and your tips how to do that? Yes, uh, we had a communication specialist uh, on PD that covering also GGS and uh, she was responsible uh, for um, uh, developing different posts, innovative uh, messages uh, and uh, also we participated with Miss Kreti in several TV shows presenting GGS and encouraging people to participate uh, and additional to this we had a, com a communication company on board so we contracted a communication company that uh, developed this, uh, all these visibility materials. We had a strategy for, for communication component, but uh, this, uh, um, the communication company was changed. Uh, so in terms of the strategy, we changed and focused more on social media because the priority in, uh, in, at NTV, at, on TV and national media was focused to the COVID and we realized that it's better to, to keep only uh, the social media posts. 
but due to the uh, all, um, only for these uh, specific circumstances that we imposed to, to, to experience, yes. As, as a follow-up question, I'm curious to see in the number of cases of respondent, did you see a slight increase each time you did the media campaign? Do you get the impression that it really made a big difference in your collection effort? Um, so we started the media campaign in March and on 15 March, the lockdown was announced. So we didn't manage to, to, to see some concrete effect. But uh, when we resumed the data collection, we started this with social media campaign and we, we uh, saw, they saw the difference uh, people are active, they participated, they commented, and uh, I think it uh, have a great result in social media, in, in that concrete case, I mean, during the COVID. Thank you. I'll turn to uh, the floor. We have a colleague, I'll probably mispronounce your name, but there's a colleague, Olzi Zuren, who would like to ask a question. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hi, Aliona. Um, so um, I'm so admired about the presentation that how UNFPA in Moldova and the government uh, uh, collaborated on this project. Um, I'm from Mongolia. So we have also UNFPA and that carries our, car used to carry out RHJs, but now it uh, combined RHJs and mix with UNICEF. Now we have social indicator sample survey. So I'm just wondering in Moldova's case, um, do you have RHJs as separate from GGS or now you do not have any of RHJs or DHS? So now uh, government also is supportive of the GG. Yes, and you and be supporting also. So just if you could just uh, provide some uh, background information on how UNFP was f in the first place uh, convinced of doing this and also government is supportive of it. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, question, very good question. So, uh, we had uh, the reproductive health survey conducted in uh, 1997 and mix conducted in 12, uh, 2000, uh, 2012. But um, we um, advocated for, of course, for GGS because it's dedicated for demographic uh, aspect issues. And uh, considering um, the demographic situation, uh, um, different demographic problems, uh, we as UNFPA um decided and will will to uh, wanted to have ggs uh, in this um uh, in this year and grateful for the ministry to to um gave us this uh, this uh, support financial support in in having uh, in uh, having this uh, survey conducted I'm not sure if I responded to your questions, but it's different surveys. So we are conducted in different stages. Uh, some of the indicators uh, um, uh, are the same, but uh, we consider the JS is quite different, more focused on demographic issues. And that is why we um, decided or advocated especially for this. Thank you. Uh, Aliana, a question now from uh, Edward Jongstra from the UNFP Regional Office. Edward is asking about um, the budget, the survey budget, and especially to what extent the COVID pandemic has affected it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, as mentioned, we have three main donors. The main donor is the Ministry, and thanks for this. Uh, they allocated uh, half a million uh, um, dollars for, for GGS and UNFPA supported uh, um, financially of 2,000 um, um, at, at the, till the moment with $200,000 and also including U uh, India UN funds. Uh, but yes, uh, COVID imposed different adjustments uh, in terms of PPE equipment, uh, um, and um, training sessions, um, we are forced to, to, um, to pay for this in addition. I mean, it's up to 
um, uh, $50,000 maximum. This is the difference before and after. So this is for communication campaign, PPE equipment and additional training sessions. Thank you uh, for this uh, explanation. Um, now I'm wondering, uh, Eliana, I think everybody is really impressed that, that by accident, you ended up having this data before the pandemic and then the other half collected during the pandemic. I wonder if you have any insights as to what did, how this pandemic has affected some of the indicators that we as demographers are interested, for example, when it comes to contraceptive views or uh, fertility intention. And, and I know that uh, Judith Copes is, is in the room. So I don't know if you want to answer the question yourself or won't let uh, Judith answer, but we're very curious about the impact of the pandemic. Yes, um, this uh, specific that we have on the sample to have these two groups, separate groups to separate some samples is very interesting for all national team that want to have this comparative analysis before and after. And of course, we will try to do it. Um, our consultant uh, and colleague um, uh, developed uh, this uh, policy analysis on how COVID-19 impacted the fertility behavior and identified that yes, uh, COVID impacted uh, um, the, the, the intention, but it for, for short periods, not in, not in long terms. Um, we have this possibility to use this and to have deeper analysis uh, using these two subsamples. But uh, for more uh, details, for, you can consult also the paper developed by Tom Emery jointly with Judith Coops on the impact uh, of COVID-19 on fertility. Thank you, uh, Eliana. Um, another question also coming from Eduard Jungstra, but this time about looking ahead. Do you have any plans for a second wave of the GGS? Sure, sure. We have plans for the second wave. And I just wrote you an email, just estimate the possible the, the needs, the cost for the second wave. We we plan to start some preparation activities in 2022 or 23 and just to, to go ahead with the next wave. Good. Thank you for that. Hope, um, yes, hope to have the ministry support also in the second phase. It'll be indeed wonderful to uh, to look at uh, what happened in between in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, migration intention, in terms of fertility intention, in terms of family dynamics. It'll be really interesting uh, indeed to see. Um, I don't see any other question in, in, uh, in the q and um, Looking at Micah, if she has any other, in no? If not, um, then it's exactly 45 minutes later. So let me uh, thank you very much to the Moldova team. Thank you to Mrs. Kretu again for the support provided by the ministry for the commitment to that type of uh, data collection effort. Thank you to Aliana Christie and the UNFPA for leading, for being fearless leaders in this most difficult, challenging uh, situation. And uh, we look forward, I have to mention to everybody that the data is available for uh, research, uh, for analysis by the GGP community. Don't hesitate to register, download the data, and uh, uh, the Moldova team will be looking for partnership to collaborate with international researchers to analyze the data. So this is an open call to all of you uh, to participate in this effort. So on this, I'd like also to thank my team at NIDI and especially Micah for organizing uh, this. We're going to formally close this, the, the webinar now, but if some of you want to continue chatting, talking with us, uh, we will keep the channel open now. But on this, thank you all of you for attending. I have to say there were 37 participants on the webinar. This is great attending. So thank
Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody.